over the last uh, few years here in uh, Texas. And uh, so starting Monday, I started at a couple of different locations, traveled everywhere between the Omni Hotel to the stockyards, uh, only hit a couple of tornadoes on the way, but outside of that, it's been a great time. And each of these panels are going to be donated to charity, the four of them. Uh, it will be the Speedway Children's Charity. And on behalf of Eddie Gossage, Texas Motor Speedway, so we're going to be presenting you this piece here for your own personal collection. No problem. I love the groundbreaking. <laughs> yeah, remember that day? <laughs> I'm good. How about you, buddy? Come on. Have a seat right here, if you would. So, um, what have you been doing this week? Not much. Not much. I know. I've been reading the papers, and you didn't make any news or anything. Uh, sure. News has been... It's been a bit of quiet week. Is this... Is the hand held on? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, see if it's on. Quiet. Yeah. yeah, I don't think it's on here. Try. It. Okay, let's just try it again. All right, there we go. Hey, yeah, it's been a quiet week. Yeah, <laughs> I, I had. Uh, what, you don't know. You, you haven't heard anything new, have you? No, it's been slow news week. Um, <laughs> Kind of been disappointed. I like to stir things up a little bit, and and uh, you're just upset it didn't happen here. Is that what it is? Uh, thank That's you, all right, Eddie. Hopefully, we. Can, I'm sure it can all happen again this weekend. You, is that a promise? Is that a guarantee? <laughs> you're in, man. You can do anything. Hey, we're here. We're here to win. So, well, good. You uh, honestly, congratulations on your wins. First time I've seen you. You were jumping up and down like you were on Tom Cruise on Oprah's couch. I, right. I expect to see Katie Holmes there. You know? I, like, I like a different analogy, but uh, yes, I was very excited. Well, I, I thought it was a great moment when Casey uh, Kane came to Victory Lane to congratulate you. And all the confusion and stuff, the way you picked him up and kissed him and said, I love you too, Leo, was just amazing. And... Uh, I, I didn't know you were a comedian, too. Oh, well, there's no end to me. Um, so anyway, uh, the truth is, is we're here to, to honor you. And as you noted, that goes back to the groundbreaking. Uh, in in Arrigo's, uh, the upper right piece of art there, you see Jeff with a, uh, a shovel with a steering wheel in his hands. That's from the groundbreaking uh, that Jeff and Bobby and Terry Labonte came and helped us with. And that was a cool day. It was a great moment. It was a great moment to be here, be a part of it, and... Uh, I think we all knew then that this place was going to be really special and, and you know, set the, the benchmark for racetracks, and I'd, I'd say it has. Well, uh, we hope so, but the thing is, is we want to we pay tribute to you, and, and unfortunately, we spent so much building the place, not a lot of money's left for you, <laughs> uh, but if, if we had had an unlimited budget, I want you to kind of slide back and take a look. This is what we would have done for you if we'd had an unlimited budget. We, we would have done Mount Rushmore, added you to that. We had an idea about a pyramid thing, but the problems in the Middle East run labor costs, so. <laughs> um, then there was this deal, and uh, I don't know what you call it, but it was it was a good idea. You got to dig that, you know, Statue of Liberty there, um, car hinge, stone hinge, twenty-four hinge. I don't know. And then some, you know, some work on the hedges there at the White House. But uh, and <laughs> got a friend at the. Uh, at, at NASA, he's going to do that for us. But I kind of like that twenty-four dollar bill. That'd be good. How about I get you one, and we call it square today? Yeah, it's it's, deal, it's, it's deal. Okay. So, uh, but that was that was an unlimited budget. We are limited. So uh, I thought there's no limits here. <coughs> <laughs> you know, we tried we try to load your lip. And you're supposed to get out of the car last year after you and, and, and Brad had a little discussion and say, you know, folks, it's no limits, Texas, things happen Yeah, here. I wish I had thought of it you, Yeah, you then. didn't say it then. It you came to me it. now, yeah. yeah. Sorry, Andy. Jeez. Timing is everything. <laughs> yeah, it is. But uh, speaking of timing, 24 days before the race, you'll see it. You just got in this morning, right? Or were you here last I night? I got here last night. Did you see the back of Big Hoss? I, I, no, I only saw it coming in the tunnel, which is very cool. I, it was dark when I got here. That's the point. At night, we light up the back of Big Hoss with a 24, 12 stories tall that you can see from miles away. Uh, had an American Airlines pilot point out to his passengers, if you look off the right side, left side, whatever, of the airplane, you'll see 
tribute to Jeff Gordon. Man, I, I, I hate I missed it. It was like a tornado when we came in here last night. So I, I, we're flying, flying low and getting into that airport fast. Well, I want you to, at some point this weekend. I'm definitely no, absolutely. I'm going to check, check it out for sure. But I love Big Hoss, so. I usually like to watch the, the the movies you guys have up there, so I'll have, to, I'll have to ride around, check it out on, on the other side. If you would. It's been up there 24 days beforehand. And then we created the uh, Jeff Gordon's Final Rodeo logo, which you see here on the monitors seen that. behind us. So we always we're, wanted to be a cowboy. Well, good. Um, <laughs> Is that my know, cue? No. No, it's just you always want... I, you know, since I moved here 20 years ago, I, I started doing a little ranching, and I, I like it too. You should now that you're going to be retired, you should do a little ranching together. I'd like you that. Know? But anyway, the signage on the property, all over the place. Uh, you're going to see uh, this is above the ticket gates, every ticket gate coming in. Uh, it's above the South Tunnel. I don't know if you saw that last night when you drove through, or if you had your head in the floor trying to duck the tornado. Uh, it's on the end of pit wall on each end entrance and exit. Uh, there's a big 24 out there on the grass that separates the front stretch and the pit road. Um, bumper stickers are going to be given to all the fans as they come in on Sunday. Uh, and on the back, they can enter a contest to win a trip to the uh, NASCAR Sprint Cup Series Awards Banquet in Las Vegas in December. Awesome. Uh, so that's a cool deal. There's even some merchandise uh, that we're doing together. I don't know if you've seen this, but... Uh, Jeff Gordon and uh, the AAA Texas 500 and uh, all that good stuff there. So I, I think cool. this may even be licensed. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Thank you, Eddie. I appreciate it. It may be. And then there's uh, the limited edition coin uh, that uh, fans can get with uh, Thank You, Jeff Gordon, on the front of it and uh, Final Rodeo on the back of it. So... Uh, uh, I got number 24. I think you just got number huh, 117. <laughs> Important number. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Cherish it forever. Yeah, I know. Uh, souvenir Program has a special flip-up corner here with Jeff Gordon's Final Rodeo, and there's four pages in here uh, about you, exclusively about you, so uh, fans can pick that up as well. And, um, and then Sunday, we're going to have 24 skydivers Coming into the speedway, all with Jeff Gordon flags during the pre-race ceremonies, just before the command to start the engines. The last one is carrying a 20 by 40 foot Jeff Gordon flag. Awesome, awesome. So, I, my kids will be excited to see that. Thank you. Oh, your kids are, don't even know how excited they're going to be. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, congratulations uh, are going to be seen to you throughout the weekend on Big Hoss from some folks that you don't even know probably are big fans of yours cool. and so uh, I think you're going to dig that we, we've got a DVD so that you'll be able to make sure you say, see I'll all of them I'll just get my lawn chair out and I'll, I'll, I'll go in the bus lot and just okay. chill fine. out there and watch Big Hoss all weekend that, that works perfect so we'll, we'll, you'll, I think you'll dig that and then uh, Levy is, is the chef here today uh, chef is back here uh, chef why don't you walk up this way uh, he has uh, developed uh, final. Well, first of all, your favorite ice cream, I understand, is Rocky Road. It is. Okay. He has developed the final Rocky Road EO <laughs> Sunday, which is uh, Rocky Road ice cream, a, a glazed donut, candied bacon bit sprinkles, chocolate syrup, whipped cream, topped with a cherry, uh, with a cherry, and um, uh, you know, I'll be honest. Uh, good job there, Chef. <laughs> Looks excellent. How many have you had this week? I was going to say, I, I'm going to pass because I've already had one say, today. I, I, I love Rocky Road. I can't eat it, but I love it. So um, No, I'll eat this. So maybe this maybe you can eat it in about two and a half weeks. You know? uh, I'm going to eat some today. Okay. Well, then good. Okay. Good stuff. Uh, fans can get this in concession stands. Uh, so uh, that's, that's a little tribute to you. And then uh, over here on the right... Uh, we got a little memento for you to take home. It is your own street sign for Gordon Road. Uh, I'm assuming you know that long ago we named a road after you here. So um, I climbed up the pole the other day and took this down. So people are lost out there, but you've got <laughs> I'd it. like to see that. Where's the video of that? I would like to have seen that. There's no need to be a smart ass today. Okay? <laughs> Look, That's awesome. 
Look, yeah. Well, there's you also. You got a lot of pages there. My you, gosh, you've, what? You've won $5.4 million here. It seems like you ought to be giving me gifts. I agree. You I'm, know? Like, I'm, I'm running through my head what I'm going to give you right now. Well, I already know what I got for you. Oh, boy. Hard time. <laughs> uh, so, Jeff Gordon Drive, and then uh, our friends at Lusky's Western Wear uh, have made a special pair of boots for you. It's got Texas Motor Speedway on the upper and your number and autograph on uh, the back of the upper there, so you've got uh, Jeff Gordon boots awesome. as well. Awesome. For that little ranching that you're going yes. to Yes, so, yes. Uh, so that's cool stuff. And then uh, David Arrigo over here, who's done a lot of work for the NHL, Major League Baseball. Jeff, why don't you walk back over, and I'm going to let David tell you all about that painting, and then uh, when you're done, I want you to come back in front of the, of the desk here. David? Actually, Jeff, we're going to get you to... Do a couple of why dabs as well. Well, that's why I bring white paint back. just okay. to cover up your mistakes and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, if you just throw in a little bit of yellow here and there, that'd be great. Working together, wherever you want. It's your painting. There you go. At the end of the day, hopefully we'll raise uh, some pretty good money uh, next year. We're going to be auctioning these off in April uh, for the Children's Speedway uh, charity on the Saturday night. Look at that. You found your work after racing. You can sit back at the beach, do some watercolors. I love it. There you go. So again, yeah, we're working over the last uh, few days doing this painting and trying to capture the emotion that I see every Sunday with you behind that helmet. That's awesome, man. I appreciate that, yeah, absolutely. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you very Thank much. You. And best of luck and congratulations on such a great you know, you. career. Thank you. Doing no. Well, it's uh, two more days and the fans have been loving it. Say, you got a little more work to do. Well, you guys are holding me up here at these <laughs> I presses. Know, I, I don't know. So, Thank you. No problem, no Appreciate problem. And I know uh, in a second we're going to have uh, something coming in for you right uh, now. Oh. Mr. Zizzle, thumbs up oh, and guide really on over there. Congratulations oh, again. I, I think about uh, I think about you, and you've got everything. But Ella and Leo, I thought about them, and so I've been doing. When I say when I say I've been, yes, I do. I know exactly what I just did. Here's the keys. You are rotten. Come here. Come here. Okay, this one didn't go any further. Um, <laughs> Eddie, you are unbelievable. Here's 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 the keys to the. You are unbelievable. Now, <laughs> oh my God. When I said I've been doing a little ranching, I mean I've been doing a little ranching. You have, you have a ranch? I can keep these. Um, these are gonna look good in my backyard in Charlotte. Uh, you, you don't live too far from Bruton, do you? No, I don't. I'm gonna I'm gonna see if I can park them over at Bruton's uh, during the day. He said no. Uh, <laughs> and he's talking to the Homeowners Association already. So uh, now, now you have funny. two Shetland ponies for Ella and Leo. Uh, we've already contacted them. They know they, that you have these. So you can't give them back. So, <clears throat> so congratulations, Jeff. Eddie. Seriously, Eddie. I mean... Uh, I am mad at you, but at the same time, I'm overwhelmed because my kids are going to flip out. Um, and yes, I'm going to have to find a place for them because there's no way these things are, are, are going to leave. Oh, I've, uh, already, I've already talked to Archie. They're going back in the The funniest coach. thing is I just got rid of two pets just before I came here. We, we had a little lizard. My, my son likes uh, reptiles. And we have a bunny. We didn't get rid of the bunny. We just have somebody watching it for us. But... Uh, and then I when you say got now rid of the lizard. No, no, I just let somebody else borrow them for <laughs> That's forever. what you told Leo. <laughs> but uh, I didn't know I was going to be coming home with a couple well, of ponies. Not That's only a awesome. couple of ponies. But oh God! Don't no! Don't you do more? Oh, there's don't always more. more. Uh, because they, they're not <laughs> they're not without a little bit of maintenance and um, so I got you something special there too so um, that's I'll, I'll be honest the shovel looks easier than what I got to go through with the bunny <laughs> okay good so you're all set so there you go pal Ziz said I'd be blown away you're right you're right <laughs> that is awesome no that is that's the coolest thing ever honestly uh I don't have property to have these things, but I, I have a feeling I'm going to start looking. <laughs> I got a realtor that's going to hook you up in Charlotte, and uh, so there you go. Oh, my gosh. Now, you may not remember this, 
But I was driving to the 1992 Atlanta race, you'll be fine, in November of 92. You have no idea the thoughts that are going through my head right now. I do, too, because when it hit me, I was like, yes, this is perfect. Oh, yes. um, I'm driving to the 1992 Cup race in November in Atlanta, your first race. And I looked in my mirror, and who did I see? Do you remember this at all? No, no but I... I you and Bob Lutz. Okay. That was a dangerous combination. Yes, yes, it was. It was Jeff and his roommate, and I looked at my mirror, and who's behind me driving to his first cup race? Uh, and I don't know where we were, somewhere in Georgia. And uh, you made a motion, and I'm like, uh, okay, let's go. <laughs> and so we raced for a while down, uh, what's, what's that interstate? Uh, yeah, that, I know which one you're talking yeah. about. I don't know what the number is. On I, it. I don't know. But um, in, in the year before, you had won the, the Bush race. In the baby Ruth car. Yeah, it was actually earlier that year. Earlier that year. And I'm walking by Victory Lane, and Jeff is standing there kind of by himself and looks around and goes, Eddie, you want my hat? And handed me the baby Ruth hat. And first he autographed it and then handed it to me. I, I don't know where the hat is. What? I wish that's I still a, that's had. a valuable hat right I, now, Eddie. I know. So anyway, um, and one of the first things you and I ever did together, I was the PR guy at Charlotte, and you and Michael Waltrip came over, and we delivered you in a stagecoach to a press conference. Do you remember this? Oh, yes. And you yes, had I, on I, chaps I, and cap gun six shooters, you and Michael. Oh, I remember. It, it was, and so, I mean, we were like we shooting chaps, a TV show that day. Do we have the chaps? Uh, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yes. I didn't think I'd ever get you in a pair of chaps. I, I tell you, that, that day was better than the, 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 the human bowling day. That was cool that day. So, Nothing's cooler than this. Congratulations to you, and uh, you've been a great champion for the sport in the car, out of the car. And with all due respect to Richard Petty and Dale Earnhardt and so many uh, of the important drivers that have come along through the history of this sport, to me, you're the most important driver ever because you have brought our sport to so many people. Uh, it's no, no coincidence that our sport has enjoyed its greatest growth during your time. Uh, and, and that's a tribute to you. And uh, I look around now and there's, what, eight drivers from California and there's like two from North Carolina. I think that's an accurate number. And, uh, and you're the one who did that. So the Southerners should really be pissed off at you. But... Um, they were until I got to Martinsville last week. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, but congratulations on that. Uh, all the best in going for your fifth championship, and um, I'll get you their their uh, diet dietary needs here in just a moment. We've got a sheet printed out for you. So I birthed those. I raised those from little baby Shetlands to this age. I braided their hair this morning just for you. <laughs> <laughs> You're so. awesome, Eddie. This is uh, now th those words and, and and this gift and and you know the thought you put into everything this weekend. I. I can't say I'm surprised because you you always do it to a whole nother level, and so um, you know I, you, you definitely got me uh, this this time. I, I thought of all the things you could think up and do, I didn't think anything could uh, could, could could quite uh, go this far, and this is amazing. And my kids are absolutely going to flip out. Um, but but thank you. Um, you know, I, I, when I think of the growth of this sport, and I appreciate the you know category you put me in, but uh, you know, I, I think of of all those that contributed to to what grew this sport to the level it is, and you played a huge role in that, Eddie. What you guys do around here, having a new track on on, on the schedule that started in '97, um, showing everyone how how it can be done, and 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 how to treat the fans. Um, you know, thank you. Coming from you and all that you've done, I appreciate it very, very much. And I mean it. So thank you. Thank you're you. a good awesome. pal. Now I'm gonna. I must not be too good of a pal because you just gave me these two ponies. So <laughs> you don't like these guys? Now let me make sure I got the names. I right. love them. I'm just wondering who's gonna shovel and 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 feed. <laughs> okay. And take care of them. Scout is on your left, and Smokey is on your right. Scout and Smokey. Those so, are great names. Uh, well, there you go. So. Merry Christmas. Uh, all right, I'm going to take these back outside okay. right, and let you, you sit down thank and you. answer serious questions now, here. If, if I get back to the bus and they're tied up in front of the bus, then I really am going to kill you. Ar Archie said he's going to put them in the bus. I've already <laughs> talked to them. That's how they're getting back home. So appreciate you, pal. Congratulations you're, to you. You're too much, man. Seriously. Uh, thank you. <laughs> Good time.
Alright. Holy cow. Are we, are we actually going to do some work around here? Oh my gosh, Zizzo. Zizzo, Zizzo. What am I going to do with you guys around here? Other than eat my ice cream. Alright. Are there... Carrie? <laughs> We have lost control of this. I don't think uh, we've had anything quite like that, Jeff. I've uh, seen a lot this year. That might take the cake. But uh, congratulations. Uh, all right. You're, uh, you're coming off the big win at Martinsville. Uh, you're here at Texas. Uh, you know, you're the only driver that is locked into the championship. Talk about your mindset since winning uh, at Martinsville uh, late Sunday and, and maybe some of the thoughts. Uh, that you've had now as uh, as you prepare to uh, get that fifth title. Yeah, it's been uh, an amazing week. You know, I mean, when I think back, you know, to to Sunday and and the, the mindset going into it, how important that race was, the timing of it, uh, and then of course knowing the results now, uh, what a huge, huge moment, possibly one of the biggest moments, um, and I said this Sunday, and I, I still believe this uh, in my career, um, you know, we, we've, as a family and as a team, and just all the 24 fans out there, it's been an absolutely incredible week, and uh, we're still obviously riding that, uh, that, that, that incredible wave and in, 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 uh, all the emotions that go along with it, but at the same time, we're uh, really determined and, and focused as a team. Uh, you know, I had a chance to to go around Hendrick Motorsports yesterday. We do a, a, a traditional thing about ringing the bell, uh, what we call the victory bell, where all the drivers get to do that. You go around the whole complex, and everybody gets to ring that bell. And I can't ever remember the time that I've done that where I've seen so much support, so many uh, of our uh, employees that that jacked up about a win and, and, and what we have in store for ourselves and the work we have ahead. So it's awesome to have that kind of support, and it just got me fired up to a whole nother level uh, after experiencing that, and um, so far, pretty good day uh, today as well. We'll take a few questions now, a bit of a tight time crunch. Dustin, Kenny, Bob. Dustin Long, NBC Sports. Jeff, there's been a lot of discussion or some discussion this week about – drivers getting in touch with other drivers or not getting in touch with drivers after incidences i've heard in the garage that sometimes you call somebody even if you feel like you're in the right and you're not truly sorry it's almost a disingenuous sorry but you still make that phone call so they so they have the opportunity to yell at you or whatever have that conversation is that kind of the culture have you ever called anybody when you felt like you were truly in the right but you made that call anyway and did it matter I don't think I would have ever called anybody if I thought I was in the right. Um, you know, the, the the only one I can think of that that I called was Martin Truex, Jr. Several years ago when I I was in the wrong. He didn't answer, but I left him a voicemail, uh, and I never heard back from him. But uh, you know, to me, I I was very much in the wrong, uh, and and it was all on me, my mistake, and and I, you know, I I, I called him for that. Um, you know the whole text messaging and in in uh, calling. I don't know. I'm I'm kind of torn on it. I think there it depends on what kind of, of relationship you have with that driver, how you feel about them. Uh, I don't think you should just be calling just because you're thinking of the big picture and you're thinking, boy, I I, I want to make sure that this person doesn't have payback on me because I can't win the championship without it. You know, I, I think that's the wrong reason. I think if you genuinely feel like you were you were in the wrong and you owe them an apology, then I, I and you have their phone number, then it, it, then then it's it's great if you want to call them. All right, let's go to Kenny Bruce right here in the ball cap, and then we'll go to Bob Pockers. Kenny Bruce, Bob Pockers, and then Jerry. Kenny Bruce, NASCAR.com. Jeff, how much of this weekend is is about 
trying to win on Sunday, and how much of it is about looking ahead to Homestead because there's a little bit of a similarity in what you're going to be facing down there as far as the track and the tire on it? Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of similarities. Uh, you mentioned the tire, the same tire we're going to have on, uh, in Homestead. There's definitely some fall off in this tire somewhere because of the abrasiveness of, of the track. Um, you know, this. Uh, I, th- I think in, in general we're just trying to step up our mile and a half uh, performance, and and that could contribute to this weekend. You know, to we, we want to win. I mean, we we want to we want to keep the momentum going you know, all the way into Homestead, uh, and and we also uh, need to build up our confidence on the mile and a half so that we can have the confidence that we need in Homestead. That not only are, are we a strong team, but that we're a, a team that has a car that's performing uh, at the level it needs to, to to compete for the win there also. Um, you know, I think there's a lot of different ways to win it, but, but boy, having a fast race car is the ultimate, and, and that's what we're working on uh, this weekend. And, and it gives us opportunity to step outside the box, you know, and, and, and experiment more than what we have in the past. And, and you know, that's, that's nice. And, and we'll try to take advantage of, of the position that we're in but that, that, that taking advantage of that is to try to win, and not only this weekend, but in Phoenix and in Homestead. Let's go over here to Jerry. Raise your hand, Jerry. Right there. I'm sorry, Bob. Bob had it, and then Jerry. My bad. Go ahead. Bob Parker, CSPN. Uh, five laps to go. Tomorrow you run second behind a guy who's in the chase. Would you be willing to do the move that Joey Logano did to Kenseth at Kansas and do the events of the last few weeks, seeing how far a driver would go for retribution impact your decision? I mean, you know, when, when you see the, the the opportunity to win, then you're going to you know do what you feel is necessary to to go you know win. Um, you know, I'm not the same driver that Joey is. I, I'm I'm probably a little less aggressive in that scenario. If if that was for the win in Homestead, now that's a different that's a different scenario. Um, you know, you're talking about for the championship. You know, for for us this weekend, ha- having a solid performance, and if we have a shot at the win, uh, and and I could do it in a clean way, then then I'd go for it. If it's the two car, that's going to be different. But uh, you know, to to just go do that to whoever I'm racing in the chase, um, when I feel like it's it's you know a little more desperate, or it's because they were blocking me and I didn't like that, uh, I, I I don't know if that's worth it because. Because in my opinion, that is going to come back to you, possibly over the next couple of weeks, possibly at Homestead, and and you know there, I don't know if that's that risk is worth taking at this point in the game. Let's go to Jerry. Go ahead, Jerry. Uh, Jerry Fraley, Dallas Morning News. Jeff, what does it mean to you to be going out at the top of your game along the lines like a John Elway who won a Super Bowl in his last game? Well, I, I've said you know all along that. Uh, this this year that, that I, I would nothing would mean more than me to me to and this team to go out of this sport on top. I mean when when I said that I, I meant you know being competitive uh, and and either winning races or a shot at winning races or a shot at the championship or a championship. Um, you know that that we got knocked down a few notches for most of the season because that wasn't happening and and so. You know, for things to turn around the way they have for us since the chase started um, has been extremely rewarding. It's been, um, you know, the, I think it, it was humbling earlier in the year, and now it's uh, it's very gratifying because of all the hard work and effort that's been put into it. And 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 this team is ready. They really are. They they uh, they are are, are very very uh, determined to make this happen, and we believe that we can. So uh, I, I, you know, I hope we can talk about that after Homestead. Right now, it's you know, it's it's really um, too much, really to to fathom. All right, but it do, would mean a lot. We're going to do three more. Wolfgang, my man, right here, and then we'll finish with George Diaz. Go ahead. Okay. Wolfgang Monzer from Germany, Rangeport Press, and you, Jeff. Eddie said earlier your first race was '92, so it makes 23 total in NASCAR racing. During this time, what was the most impressive for yourself, most impressive technology you have ever seen in NASCAR racing? Hmm. Yeah, I mean, 
you know, unfortunately, I'm not going to get a chance to, to, to drive the uh, the cars with the with the digital dash in them next year. Uh, but uh, you know, the EFI certainly w- w- one of them. <clears throat> I mean, the 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 way that the teams use computer simulation, I would say, is probably the the biggest one. I mean, when I first came into the sport, we had uh, telemetry that we put on the cars. I don't know if we really knew what we were doing with it, but over over the years, you know, just, just fine-tuning that, and now <clears throat> we have, uh, you know, a computer that basically we we punch in all the numbers of the setup or a setup change, and it tells us, it spits back to us what it should do to the balance of the car and, and, and you know, what it should do in certain parts of the corner. Uh, that's probably the, the, the biggest advancement that, that I have seen. Right here, and then we'll finish with George. Go ahead. Uh, Dan McFadden with NBC Sports. Jeff, th- this track was kind of a thorn in your side for about uh, 11 years until y- you won in 2009. What was it about this track that made it hard for you to, to, to conquer, and where do you place Texas in the pantheon of tracks you've been racing at since 1992? Yeah, you know, I think there's, there's, there's tracks. It's a lot different here than, say, Kentucky. Kentucky uh, was one of those tracks where we never ran good enough to win there we you know we we maybe once i thought we were in a position to win there because uh, of, of performance that wasn't the case here we performed at a very high level here the first couple of races and for for different reasons didn't didn't make it to victory lane then we went through a period of time where we really struggled here um and and then that kind of turned into uh, a track that i ran very consistently well at and then eventually we got that win and and i feel like we've been pretty solid here ever ever since then it's just a this is one of the most challenging mile and a half tracks that we have if you look at how flat the straightaways are and how the transitions fall into the corner and the amount of banking and speed that we have in the corners some of the big bumps that happen over the over the tunnels here uh more obstacles uh it gets narrow up off the corner that that, and yet you're carrying a tremendous amount of speed so it, and there's fall off. You got to move around the racetrack. This is, this is, I mean, it's, this is a very, very challenging racetrack. But, but I love the challenges that that are here. It's one of my favorites. Final question, George. <laughs> yeah, we're in front. Uh, George Diaz, Orlando Sentinel. Jeff, discounting your victory last week, as all the other stuff that's been going on the last several weeks, has it been good for the sport? Well, you talking in about terms the, of image and you talking and about the, the crash? Yeah, the, the, the you know the Kansas well, Lagan. Well, I, listen, I, I, I'm I'm one that believes that any publicity is good publicity, and and I think when there's that much buzz and attention on the sport, I think that that you know while there's there could be negative things surrounding it, I still think that it it heightens the sport in the long run. Um, you know, I understand why. Uh, you know why that penalty was so severe um, you know it's it's it, you know nascar wanted there to to be a, a line and and i like it when they draw a line you know because so often we hear about judgment calls and and we don't like judgment calls we like things to be clear and i think we're all pretty clear now um so you know i think that uh yeah, it, it's gotten the people talking. It's got the media talking. It's got the fans talking. It's created, uh, you know, I think only more, uh, um, you know, build up to what's already a very exciting chase format and, and close to the season. And so, I, I, I don't want to say I look at it as positive. I just think that it it does uh, bring more eyes to the sport. And then they can choose and decide how, how how they go from there. So I always think when something like that happens, it's important to follow it up with an amazing race. You you follow it up just like you know. I mean, Texas was out of control and crazy last year, but then we followed up with Homestead being one of the most amazing races for the championship. And I I think that that last impression uh, like that uh, draws you know a lot more fans to the sport. Jeff Gordon, congratulations on uh, being honored and recognized here today at Texas, and good luck this weekend and the rest of the season. Thank you. Appreciate it.